What's up guys, Togui here and welcome back to more Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. In the last episode, we started exploring Toad Town, trying to find a way to make it to the Star Hill, which seems to be the next destination on our journey, and found out that we needed to split up the adults and babies to be able to fully explore, or not fully explore, but even make it through this town due to the way the gates are set up. In this episode, we are going to finish exploring Toad Town, hopefully. And, okay, when they spin away from the screen, it means they're, f or, sorry, when they spin to the, r oh, wow, okay, I just am terrible at that attack. I was trying to say that I had figured out which direction means what, and I actually got it backwards because I'm recording this the day after the previous episode in which we were in Totan. And look at that, I had five more damage to deal. Maybe I should have gotten that power equipment for the babies after all. Wouldn't have taken that damage there. But that's okay. We'll head up into this house, move to the top screen, and I don't think there's any beans in here. Yeah, there should just be these three blocks, which have 20 coins. This one has 50, and then an ultra drop. Kind of nice. As I mentioned, I did go in back to the shop in between episodes. I went with the adults, and I stocked up so you can see I have a ton of regular mushrooms and mushroom drops. And you know what? I think this is the right time for a regular mushroom drop because I don't know when else I'm going to be needing 15 HP worth of heals. Here we can grab three red shells, and if I could get the first strike, please. Come on. Oh my gosh, let me hit you. Thank you. Simple enough fight. It's just a single skeleton key just as last time. We have to go underneath two grates, and I'm going to go ahead and cut up that skeleton key battle, but the love bubble does actually have another attack I need to show. Oh, and of course, here we go. It immediately uses this attack. It basically just spins in a circle around the bros and you need to hammer it away and you get a chance to do it with both bros because it goes around in a circle. If you let it go around too long without hitting it, it will then attack you. Nothing complicated. Well, it was very polite of that love bubble to show off the attack I was hoping it would show. Now we can go ahead and grab a few items here and make it down to the next room. You see, the babies actually only have to go through that one room to meet up with the adults who had uh, four to go through. So we can line up, hit all of these in order. Oh. Okay, I guess Luigi, baby Luigi, was actually in the middle, so even though I hit the wrong button, he was able to open the, uh, hit the block that was meant for baby Mario. We can dig under this grate, and... Instead of bringing the adults down, we're actually going to reunite because we have a few places on the left that the babies need to go. So I'm going to cut to those. In the second of the rooms here, we'll send the babies through the side door on the uh, right, the little garage. Sometimes it's on the left, sometimes it's on the right. Can grab some coins and a bean, and then by going over to the main section, we get mushrooms, a single coin. Oh, two max mushrooms. That's really good. And a few more coins in there. And now I'll meet you up in one second in the room just north of this that has the other yellow house. And here going into this one, we have another bean. So up to you if you want to stay buried the whole time or pop out so you can move a little faster and make it over there. We have the dynamic badge A. Two green shells, which is actually nice because I've been using those a lot in this area. Not that I actually needed to collect more though. I say it's nice, but <laughs> the whole point of using him is to get rid of them, not pick up more. Let's take a quick look at that badge we just got. Uh, do we have the regular dynamic badge? I wish I could, and we do. Boost attack item power, boost attack item power, but use two items per attack. Dynamic badge A, massively boost attack item power, but use four per attack. This is really, really pricey. Uh, but I think at some point we'll put this on and see just how much damage we can do with something. For now, I'm not gonna equip it though. Let me meet you back down at the bottom. And here, where the adult side was, we go down and we can get to this save album. We have a sign here, Star Hill visitors enter the lower left blue pipe, Star Hill Tourism Bureau. It says lower left, but there's only one blue pipe. I get that it means the lower left of the sign, but like, it's literally on screen. Like, you didn't have to say lower left. I could see it from here. You could have just said enter the blue pipe. But before we do that, we're going to use both the adults and babies together to hit this block which then will allow us to go back to the time hole we came through so long ago. I'm going to jump back in time to Peach's castle to see if there's anything new for us there, and if not, I'll just cut back to going to that pipe. 
So EGAD didn't have any wacky dialogue, but the shop does have the new items from Toad Town. So you can now buy max mushrooms as well as ultra drops and one-up supers. And for bros items, you can also get the red shell and the mix flower. I don't think there's any difference in price. And again, I'm not gonna be buying any mixed flowers now because I don't think they really expect you to come back here. I think they expect you to go straight on to the Star Hill. Um, so those are really bros items meant for later. But if we look at the new gear, the Royal Pants would be an additional 20 defense at the cost of the 15 HP. I don't think this is worth it in my opinion because we already have pretty high defense and kind of low HP on the babies. For the adults, uh, actually we have different things on each. Right now, we'd get an additional 10 defense on Luigi, but at the cost of the massive speed bonus. And for Mario, we would get an additional, uh, yeah, 30 defense at the cost of the 20 HP. Uh, ooh, I also don't, ooh, that one actually might be kind of worth it because it would get Mario's defense more in line with Luigi's and also put his HP more in line. Uh, kind of conflicted. It is a bit expensive, and we'll get another chance to buy this, so I'm not going to worry about it for now, but I may change my mind later. In terms of badges, you can get the Drain Badge A, which we've already seen. The Cure Badge A, recover lots of HP every turn. That's kind of nice. Shroom Badge A, greatly increased points recovered by using mushrooms in battle. Also kind of nice. We've already seen the regular Shroom Badge, as well as the regular Cure Badge. Actually, we haven't seen that. I haven't equipped that. And that's it, really nothing crazy. So time to go back in time. In case you were wondering, there's no uh, areas on the right side that only the adults can access. And as we step on this warp pipe, that will take us to Star Hill, which is an awesome looking area. Again, this is pointing out, the Cobalt Stars appears to be very agitated. <laughs> Good job, Stuffwell. Danger, alert, danger. So disturbed, I'm rapidly losing control of it. We must summit quickly. There should be something in the immediate vicinity. I was trying to say, ooh, copy flowers, coins, and uh, if I can stop getting sidetracked, six mixed flowers. Again, you don't really need to buy a ton of these, as with any bro item, because you'll just find them. This is, again, what I'm talking about, of the game kind of changes pace in this second half. Yes, you do get a time hold that lets you return to Peach's Castle if you feel like you need to stock up on more items, but... Oh, what's this shadow? A Goomba? But it's not like you go back as part of the story and get some new abilities. It's really kind of a uh, totally just like optional thing. They really put you onto this uh, progression line staying in the past. This is a hand fake, has about 117 HP. On its turn, it can pull out a sign, and depending on what sign it pulls out, it has different attacks. Right there, we saw the Paratroopa attack. It spins the sign around. Ooh, a mixed flower from the battle. That's really nice. It spins the sign around, and then once it pulls up to a bro, we saw it pulled the sign back before attacking. Oh, I didn't realize there are still love bubbles here. It pulls the sign before it back before attacking, equal to the number of times that it spun the sign around. So, you just need to kind of pay attention to that number uh for each whoops for each of the signs there's only one single attack although there might be different variations such as the tell the paratroopa and what we saw in the goomba there uh he throws it to the right it rolls in from the left you just have to jump over it he threw it kind of angled downwards which is why i aimed for luigi if he had thrown it upwards it would have aimed for mario that's the only thing you need to worry about there and as you also noticed in the first battle, when you attack one, their sign breaks. On their turn, they then pull out a sign. You see that's aiming for Luigi again because it kind of went downwards. They uh, pull out a new sign, but then still take their turn. So you can't prevent them from attacking by destroying the sign, but you can if you're afraid of trying to dodge whatever attack it is that they have telegraphed right then and there. You can force them to switch to a different one, which is why I'm trying to get to show some of the other things they can do because they can do more things than just Goomba and Paratroopa. We are, however, going to get a level up. We've got good rolls on HP and power. Also decent on stash, but I think I'll just go with power because I like having that over 100. That's really exciting. Luigi's about to get base HP over 100, which would also be nice. Uh, ooh, speed and defense also look good as does stash, but I think we'll go with HP just to get something over 100 since we're so close and kind of exciting to do so. All right, 
in the rest of, I guess I shouldn't have jumped on this right away. We'll see. Does it break his sign? It does. Okay, that lets us skip seeing the Goomba. Come on, show one of your other attacks. If he doesn't show anything new... Well, this is the last one that I will leave in. But other than that... No, he's still just doing this. Okay, one spin, so you see one lean back, and then it comes in. And you can, of course, get a counter. Uh, I have a feeling my hammers are going to kill him because they're even with the failed action command, we're doing a decent amount of damage. Oh, no. No, just doing the Goomba again, but that's what it looks like aiming for Mario and just Power Troopa. Okay, I... Actually, can you hammer attack these guys? I assume you can. Yeah, 62 damage. I will cut out any future battles against them until we see their other attacks based on the other signs they have. However, we do have another new enemy in this area, so I will leave a battle in if we see it. But this is not one of those. Took out both that love bubble as well as one right here. And here, if I could say here more times, is the other new enemy, which I can't seem to jump high enough, so I guess I just have to let it drop a bomb on me. I guess I touched the explosion. Also, I don't think I've pointed this out yet. Luigi's moving first as a consequence of that new gear we equipped. We have the Fly Guy, which you can jump on despite it having a spinning propeller blade. This is going to fall on Mario. You can kind of see based on where they stop. All right, swing back, forward, back, forward. All right, a lot to explain there. One attack, they move up to the top screen and drop a drop their bomb that you have to hammer back. You can kind of see if they stop above Mario, what's going for Mario. And I think if they stop... Uh, some, I'm not sure where they stop for Luigi. I don't think it's above Luigi, so we'll point that out. Um, the other thing was when it rocks back and forth, each... Uh, if it rocks like back and then forth, if it ends on a forward rock, it's aiming for Mario. If it ends on a back rock, it's aiming for Luigi. The other thing to note, besides them having around 80 HP, is that if you jump over their attack, we'll see back, forward, back, forward, yep, going for Mario. If you jump over it, that means it's going to just go, uh, what's the word? Like, yeah, they pick it up without the number going down, but as you saw when we did the hammer one, the number went down, which is why I'm trying to stall turns to let this guy do another attack that we hammer back so I can show what happens when the number hits zero, if you would be so kind. No. Could you at least launch it at Luigi? Thank you. Or, sorry, it's not if it releases it on a back or forth. It's if it rocks an even or odd number of times. I was misunderstanding exactly how that worked. So, one, two, three, four. So that's for Mario. And you see it actually speeds up each time. The time I went for Luigi was on the third rock that it released. So, now, thank you. Alright, this is still Mario. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, I guess you just have to pay attention to the shadow. Well, you can see if it hits you, it kind of just drops down again. I wonder what happens if it hits you when it's not at the number one. Because the number went down when it hit me. So, I'm going to have to try out in these battles both hammering back a 1 successfully by paying attention to the shadow. Thank you. All right, the shadow is above Luigi, so it's aiming for Luigi. There we go. You knock it back and do a counterattack, which does some damage. The other thing that I will need to keep an eye out for is what happens if you get hit by 1 when it is not at the number 1. And hey, one of these little uh, kind of... Oh, we've got a bunch of things to do here, but this is the end of the path, even though on the top screen it doesn't quite end like this. The... I believe this is just a return-only path if we head up. Yeah, we can see you're... you Basically, you fall down here if you get stuck, and that's because we need to be baby pancakes to go through this. Uh, since there's a gate, we can't just baby drill through it. And if we lose our baby pancake status, then you're able to go underneath or, sorry, to make your way out without getting permanently stuck. So let's activate this. Uh, trying to see, where do we want to go first? I don't actually think there's anything to the right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are just useless entirely. So we'll first get out on this first... First get out on this first. First come out on the lower of the two platforms where we can do a few things, such as get into some battles, but also grab a bunch of coins... 100 there, 
as well as a bean. And there's also some items over on the left, but we'll do these battles. Oh, here we have the Bowser. Whoops. Okay, well, we have one with Bowser, one with bob -omb. I'm going to take this turn to heal so that they don't pull out new ones and we can see these attacks a bit more. And I guess just use another mushroom for the sake of it. All right, the bob -omb attack gets thrown. You see, when it's right side up, it's aiming for Mario. When it's upside down, it's aiming for Luigi. You need to hammer it back multiple times before it breaks. For the Bowser, if there's a Boo carrying the flame, you need to jump with baby Mario. And hopefully we'll get a chance to see how you need to dodge with Luigi, what the tell for that is. Oh, we have two Bowsers now. The Shy Guy, that means the fire is aiming for Luigi. That's everything the hand fakes have. We've now seen the ways to dodge and be able to figure out what it is they're doing on all of their different attacks between the Goomba, the Paratroopa, Bowser, and the bob -omb. On the initial throw for the bob -omb, it's the same thing. You just look at see if it's right side up or upside down to figure out who it's aiming for first. And of course, if it hits you, it's going to do some explosion-based damage. So now we've seen everything from the hand fake, and there's just a few more quirks I want to test out with the fly guy. Continuing across, we have another hand fake. I'm going to try to avoid for a second. Grab three mixed flowers, as well as another set of coins. In that fight, the only thing worth noting that I didn't already point out was that hitting the, uh, hitting the hand fake with a hammer also breaks their sign. It's not just jumping on them. So it, it should be any attack. I'm fairly certain that doing like a bros attack would have the exact same effect or using a bros item, I guess I should say, as the technical term. Now this time, we already saw that there's nothing worth seeing on the right of either of these platforms here. So we'll just send the pancakes all the way up to the top. And I guess we have to sit here and wait for them to return to normal. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long. And we come out on the layer above where, again, our enemies just doing poor area design happened to put a pipe for us to reunite. If they didn't, we would have had no way to get the adults up here and it would have been basically game over for the adventure because the babies would have had to do everything else on their own. The last item we have on the screen are these two mixed flowers and I'll go ahead and finish taking out all of the enemies in this room. We got to level up on the babies from that fight. And unfortunately, we did have an instance where they, the fly guy did dro the dropping attack. What am I trying to say? I'm frazzled a bit. Tried to drop the bomb when it was at not one, but I missed the action command. So I didn't get to show Or No, the whole point was missing the action command. I missed the action command. It just went down a number. Um but I think he picked it up. I guess I'll just have to leave the, the clip in. So even though I told myself to cut it out, don't cut it out. Yeah, right there you can see what happens when it's the throne attack. When it hits you, the number does go down like before, but I can confirm that I've gotten hit by one that said three on it. If you get hit and the number's not one, it just goes down by one, but it gets picked up. If you get hit when it says one, whether it's being dropped or thrown, then it hits you and bounces and then deals a second set of damage to you um, from the explosion. I can't tell if I'm wording this right or not made the full loop complete and that is all of the enemies to take care of up in this room there are three copy flowers some coins what's in this block three ultra drops that's kind of nice i had a feeling this would be a bean even without needing to uh check the map i have and continuing to walk upwards we have a save block three mixed flowers again those are really expensive Two one-up supers, three red shells, those I don't care as much about, and another 100 coins. Was that 100 or 80? I honestly didn't pay enough attention. But be very careful walking up here. I almost just made a big mistake. 
I highly recommend you heal, even though it looks like, oh yeah, there's go obviously going to be a boss, and the boss arena, who's not, oh, baby Mario, sure, whatever. I bought these mushrooms just to use them for whatever. Even though it looks like the boss room would be the next room up, the dead end there, it's not. It's actually in this room, so make sure you heal before you step up here. Also, if you're not recording a Let's Play, I highly recommend you save before this fight. Where exactly did those guys come from? And how did that fit inside a ship? This guy doesn't waste your time. Basically, just get right into the fight. Leans in some shrooms, carrying a giant bomb. Tells them to stop before they reach us because, you know, he's a courteous enemy. We see this is the shrew bomb, as well as three support shrooms. If you try attacking the shrew bomb, I have a feeling, yeah, one damage per attack. No matter what you do, you're not going to be taking this thing out. What you do want to do is take out the support tubes that are carrying it. We'll start with the middle one. They will throw it and they will alternate which bro it's on. And you just have to keep hammering it back and forth. When it explodes, they all take 27 damage. But I have a feeling that if this thing were to hit us, it would do a lot more than that. We're going to keep working on taking out these shrooms because, as we can see, even if you were to take out the bomb, they would just resupply it. And once you take out one, the other two will flash. Now, you can take out the left one, or you can take out the right one. I highly recommend not taking out the left one, and instead focusing on the right one. This is a fight where you need to be careful about who you take out. Also, if you paid attention, the bomb winked before being thrown it was winking with its uh the eye towards mario that means it's going towards mario you know pretty simple tells it's a cutscene when the second one dies if you destroy the uh left one and the right one i think the middle one just gets crushed and then nothing it's probably brings in a new set of support troops and a new bomb you destroy the left and middle the bomb will roll towards you and do damage but if you destroy the one on the right you will actually get Commander Shroob knocked out from behind the scenes, and you can go ahead and start attacking the actual boss here. He can do the typical Shroob attack of shining to shoot Mario or spinning to shoot Luigi. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm just making sure we didn't miss any attacks from the support Shroobs. I don't believe we did. This guy is about 1,300 HP, so definitely a pretty beefy boss fight, although... I don't think it's anything significantly worse than the Bowser fight. He does go even faster than the um, weird white and blue guys that we fought on the, the Shrewd Mothership. I already forgot their name. Here's his other attack. He can... Whoops. If a Shrewd falls upside down, it means it's going for Luigi. If Shrewd falls right side up, it's going for Mario. Same rules as the uh, Bob bomb attack from the hand fake. And he can also knock them along the ground. You can just kind of look and see if he's knocking them with Mario or Luigi. Or knocking them towards Mario or Luigi based on which way they run. You have to hammer them back in both things. I didn't realize those could happen in the same attack, which is why I wasn't prepared for that. And I guess I did actually miss an attack on the support troop, which is that one right there where they toss it in the air and it somehow flutter kicks. I didn't even see if it was flutter kicking, but it stays up in the air somehow. And then they ram you. That should be the very last attack that this boss has, which is... Wow, I'm taking a lot of damage here. I was about to say, which is good, because that means I have the opportunity to just go all out with the, uh, the attacks I want to use. Again, I'm not going to use anything that multi-targets, so even though this could be a good opportunity to show off the mixed flower, you'll see target all, so don't really want to do that. I'm not sure how hammering would work in this fight, if you can hammer the guy in the middle. But, you know, it's just, might as well jump, as this famous saying goes. It's supposed to be a joke. And nobody thinks it's funny, not least of all, this support troop who's about to get defeated in the same way dying in the cutscene. Bringing out Commander Shroob. Uh, I'm going to try out a Mixed Flower because it is a boss fight. 
This is a very difficult attack for me for some reason. I was never good at this as a kid. So you quickly press the button of the bro with the big fireball. Keep the fireball on the top screen. The bigger it is, the stronger it is. So that's not really a command. That's just advice. This is an attack that is like the fire flower, but only works when you have uh, all four bros. The thing is that the fire can switch between any of the four, so you can't just rely on the sound cue to know exactly what button to press. The more you hit, the more it'll stay in the air. And look at that, 204 damage, and it targets all enemies. All right, let's try to do better on this. Let's see, that's going for Luigi. Well, I failed. He only threw the three. Even though this is the last one and it's pitched as the ultimate one, I don't like it as much as trampolines or coffee flowers. I, I, I mean, obviously, because these attacks are endless, they're much more powerful if you're good at the timing. The nice thing, I guess, about the uh, mixed flower is that you're hitting everybody and it doesn't take forever. can also do a lot of... Uh, well, I was about to say a lot of status effects, but no, not really. Just, like, burn the only thing you'd expect. And I messed up because I was talking, but look at that. 210 damage for a cheaper item. So... I prefer copy flowers. We'll also use a trampoline. They're a bit harder to time than the copy flowers because you have to look back and forth between the screens. But I think they do about the same damage in the end. I mean, we'll see unless I take this guy out before making it past 200 damage, which I don't think we're going to because we haven't really dealt that much damage to him so far. I guess the one other advantage of this is that once you fail, you still get to hit the button three more times, but like... Good luck. I mean, if it's already going fast enough that you failed, you're probably not going to hit the majority of those. Although, if you're paying attention to which ones come down, you should be able to hit the last one. I say right as I miss and then hit with the others. Actually, 431. I did a lot better there than I did on the... Come on, launch one up. Right side up. Thank you. Okay, for some reason, I'm really bad at hitting the ones that go up in the air. Let's see. Can I finally do one? There we go. Wow, he really has it out for Mario this time really has it out for Mario. Okay, I was fully expecting him to go back and get the uh, the support troops again, but he seems to want to stay out here, and we've already seen all of his attacks, so I'm just going to keep going ham on this guy. I guess the only thing I have not shown off is the other two situations of destroying the support troops in a way that they would roll forward and hit you. But the reason I don't want to do that is because... If I die, I will go back a very long way to the last time I saved, since I'm not saving at the save album right before the boss, because I'm doing this in the middle of a video, and if anything fails to record, I don't want to be completely wrecked out of getting back everything I would want to show. Also, normally... Wow, he's really just letting me wail on him. All right, let's do a copy flower, just because I'm tired of seeing the trampoline. See if I can do as much damage as I was on those other uh, turns. You definitely actually do less damage per hit. Maybe the trampoline is a lot better than the copy flower. It just, I feel like you definitely get more time. Oh, never mind, he was that close to dying, 133. Uh, I don't feel like it's necessary to show what happens if you attack the other pairs because you would never intentionally do that. Oh, we only got a one-up super. The other reason I highly recommend saving, even if you don't think this fight is hard, is that I believe that he can drop a piece of gear, which uh, I've seen mixed documentation on this. It's part of how this game is like very poorly documented, at least from the sources I've been able to find. I feel like I've seen a source saying he can drop a, uh, like a either a badge or a pair of gear that's unique to only this fight. Um, but I'm not going to be going out for it because, again, I don't think any of that is like super necessary and i'm just trying to have fun and get through the game so that's gonna do it for this episode because as i'm sure you can imagine if we go up through that transition there's gonna be a lot of dialogue and this video is getting up in time so next time we make it to the top of the star hill hopefully figure out some of what's been making our cobalt star shard fragments or i already said shards not shard fragments but you know what i'm saying making them freak out and continue on on our quest all right See you guys next time.